I've covered the theory and the basics behind sectioned formula and using that when it comes to vectors. What I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to set you a couple of questions on it. I want you to read the questions, pause the video, have a crack at them, and then come back and check your answers. So, here you go. First one, if I give you two coordinates and I tell you there's a third coordinate which divides them in a certain ratio, the vector between them, I want to know the coordinates of that new point, so the point P in this case. The second one, I'm giving you three coordinates and I want you to tell me the ratio in which the line is divided up by that middle point. And the third one, if I have got a line AB and it's divided in the ratio of 1 to 1 by a point M, and I'm telling you that A and B have generic coordinates of X1, Y1, Z1 and X2, Y2, Z2, I want you to find the position vector of M, which is the midpoint of that. So a bit more of a generic question. So pause the video and have a crack at them. So the first question, if A is equal to that and B is equal to this, and I tell you that AB to PB is given by the ratio of 2 to 3, find the coordinate of P. Well, in this case, we have to instantly think what our formula was. So in this case, we have to remember that our formula is NA plus MB over N plus M. Now, we need to make sure we get the N and the M the correct way around. So you can imagine we take our line, which goes from A to B, and there's my point P. Now, A to P, P to B is given by the ratio of 2 to 3, which means my 2 is there, my 3 is there. Now, A to P is the M part of a ratio, P to B is the N part of a ratio. So we're able to read that M is equal to 2 and N is equal to 3. Again, another easy way to do it is imagine we draw lines like that and we go across. That's the part that goes with each of the vectors. So N is given by 3, M is given by 2. So what I'm able to say is that P equals NA, so 3 times the vector for A, 4, negative 5 and 0, plus MB, so plus 2, which is our M, times the vector for B, negative 1, 10, 15, over the N plus M, which is given by 3 plus 2, which is 5. So now we've got all these different parts. What we have to do now is just calculate all the different bits we're doing. So, 3 times this plus 2 times that, so 3 fours, which is 12, plus 2 times negative 1, so that's 12, plus negative 2, that's 10. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, plus 2 tens, which is 20, negative 15 plus 20, which is 5. 3 zeros are 0, plus 2 fifteens, that's then 30. So that's me done the 3 times that plus 2 times this, but my P is given by a fifth of that. So I've got to calculate a fifth of each of these. So what I can then say is therefore my P equals a fifth of 10, which is 2, a fifth of 5, which is 1, and a fifth of 30, which is 6. So that's the vector to get to P. So then I can say find my coordinate of P is 2, 1, 6. Remember, this is the vector to get to there. With relation to the origin, we could just turn that straight into a coordinate and get that. Second part was if P equals this, Q equals this, and R equals this, find the ratio which Q divides P to R. So again, you can imagine we've got P to R, and there's our point Q. We've got it in the ratio of M to N. We want to know what M to N is. Well, what we have to do is look at the journey we do for each of them. So we have to look at the journey in X direction, Y direction, and Z direction for each one from P to R. So for P in the X direction, we go from negative 6 to 19. That's a journey of 25. In the Y direction, it's negative 7 all the way up to 18. Again, that's a journey of 25. And in the y Z direction, we start at 2 and we get all the way to 12. That's a journey of 10. Now, <coughs> if we start in the x direction, we end up at 4 when we get to q. So we go negative 6 to 4, which in this case is 10. We went negative 7 to 3 in the y direction for that. Again, that's 10. And 2 to 6 in the z direction, which is 4. So I can then start to look at each of these as a ratio. So I get 10 over 25 for the x, 10 over 25 for the y, 
and 4 over 10 for the z. Now if I simplify each of these, I get 2 fifths in x, 2 fifths in y, and 2 fifths in z. So what that means is 2 fifths of the journeys from p to q, 3 fifths will be q to r. So this ratio here is 2, this one is 3, the whole thing is a 5. So what I can then do is I can then say, therefore, n to n is given by 2 to 3. The ratio that q divides this line p to r in is the ratio 2 to 3. We look at how far along each part of the journey it goes, and we can work it out from there. Last question I asked you was, if m divides a to b in the ratio of 1 to 1, and I tell you that a is given by x1, y1, z1, and b is given by x2, y2, z2, find the position vector of m, which is the midpoint of a, b. Again, we stick with the same sort of formula. So for m, it's equal to n times a plus m times b over the n plus m. And again, it's imagining it's a scenario like this. So there's our a, there's our b, that's where the m is, and our two ratios on either side, the n and the m, are 1. So in this case, n is 1, m is 1, and the n plus m is equal to 2. So we can substitute all of this in there, and what we're able to say then is m equals, well in this case the top just becomes a plus b, n plus m on the bottom becomes 2. So if I do a plus b, I add the x's, the y's, and the z's, and I've got a half outside it. So if I add the x's, I do x1 plus x2, I've got y1 plus y2, and I've got z1 plus z2. So that's it in terms of a vector. I can turn this into a coordinate and say, fine, so m is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2, and z1 plus z2 over 2, for the coordinate. Now, look at each of these. The x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2, z1 plus z2 over 2. Each of those are finding the average, the mean, i.e. the middle, in each of those directions. This finds the middle of the x direction, this finds the middle of the y, and this finds the middle of the z. This actually has a special name. This is what's called the midpoint formula. And you, it's a special version of the formula, the section formula we had, that we can use if we are specifically after the midpoint of any two points, given that it's split in that ratio. So if you're ever asked that, think of it in terms of this. And you can use that straight away to be able to calculate it. Now, these are some of the kinds of questions you have to be able to do. Obviously, it can be extrapolated a little bit and put into slightly more complex scenarios. But this is the basics you have to be able to do and you have to be able to build on all of these skills and work your way through using them.